Hi guys, this is Steve Lacerra, and today we will learn how to create a tempo map in Pro Tools. A tempo map is creating a click to audio that had not been recorded with a click. For example, we have a session with some drums here, and let's listen to that. And this was just recorded uh, freeform, no click. Now, why would we need to create a click? Okay, several reasons. First of all, if we're doing overdubs, we need a count in at the beginning so that, let's say, a bass player knows where to enter. Right now, we have no click. Drums just start. Okay, I'm going to add a click track. And I'm going to play that again. And you can hear that this click has absolutely nothing to do with the audio. So that's one reason. Another reason would be for cueing purposes. Uh, for example, at the end here, the drums stop and then come back in. And it would be nice if we had a click playing through that so that another musician would be able to cue back in. And then perhaps the biggest reason is that right now we do not have the ability to do any sort of quantization of MIDI data. So if we needed to add, let's say, a synth sequence to this drum kit and we wanted the MIDI data to be very tight with the drums, we would have to manually edit that. And that's no fun. But once we've created the tempo map, we will have a grid and we can quantize to that grid. So let's take a look here. We have grouped the drums. Uh, we have set our grid to eighth note. Why? Because the drummer is basically playing eighth notes. At the moment, we are in slip mode. That may change later. And something really important that we need to use is called Tab to Transients, which is this little tool that we're going to turn on right here in the upper left. So you need to have that turned on. And what that will do is every time I press the Tab key, it will automatically move my cursor to the next transient. And you can see that moving. And that's going to be really important. Every time I hit the Tab key, it will push my cursor to the next transient. So I'm going to click here outside of the audio and I'm going to press tab and you can see my cursor is blinking at the beginning of the first kick drum and that's going to be the downbeat for my session. But at the moment the Pro Tool session doesn't know that. So I hold command, I push the I key and I get a little dialog here that says add bar slash beat marker and I want this marker to be measure three beat one, tick zero. And we'll get to ticks in a moment. Then I'm going to tab to my snare drum, which would be beat two. I'm going to hold command I. And again, I get that dialog. And I'm going to set this marker to measure three, beat two, tick zero, and click OK. I will tab to my next kick drum. Command I. That's going to be measure three, beat three, tick zero. And you can see that there's a grid forming in the background here. And I tab to my snare drum, command I, and that's gonna be measure three, beat four, tick zero. And we'll continue here. Tab to my next kick drum. Let's see if that's a downbeat or if that's an N. It might be an N. It is an N, so I don't need to mark that, but I'll mark the next one, Command I, and that'll be my downbeat for measure four. So measure four, beat one, tick zero. I tab to the snare drum, Command I, measure four, beat two. We may have gone too far, so we're gonna go back. Command I, this will be measure four, beat two, tick zero. Let's listen. So this guy right here is an N. It's on the upbeat. Okay, so how do I locate it? Pro Tools has 960 ticks per quarter note. 
That means one quarter note can be divided into 960 tiny little pieces. So you have to use your musical knowledge here. An eighth note is one half of a quarter note. If one quarter note is 960 ticks, an eighth note is 480 ticks. And that will place a marker on this kick drum. The next kick drum is also an upbeat. So this will have a location of measure four, beat three, tick 480. And then we have a snare drum that's on the four. I hit command I, measure four, beat four, tick zero. Let's listen here. Okay, my downbeat is here. So we'll tab to that transient command I. This is going to be measure five, beat one, tick zero. Tab to my snare drum transient, command I, measure five, beat two, tick zero. Let's listen. This second kick drum is a downbeat. I tab to that. That's measure five, beat three, tick zero. And then I'm gonna to tab to the next snare drum. Command I, measure five, beat four. We're gonna set that to tick zero. Let's listen to this next coming kick drum. That's a downbeat. We'll tab to that, command I. That's measure six, beat one. Tab to my snare drum, command I, measure six, beat two. Let's listen to the next kick drum. That's an up, and we'll do command I. That's gonna be measure six, beat two, tick 480. And then we have a snare drum here. That will be measure six, beat three, tick zero. There's a little fill going on here. Let's listen to that. And my tom here is actually beat four. Let's listen to that. One, two, three, four, again. So this guy right here is beat four, tick zero. That's my downbeat for the next measure. Command I, measure seven, beat one. Tab to my next snare drum, command I, measure seven, beat two, tick zero. This is a eighth note, we can skip that. We'll go to the next transient here. For my kick drum, there's my downbeat, command I, measure seven, beat three, tick zero. My next snare drum will be beat number four, command I. Okay, and then the next kick drum is gonna be the downbeat of the next measure. That'll be measure eight, beat one, tick zero. I'll tab to the next snare drum, command I. That will be measure eight, beat two, tick zero. And let's listen here. And again, we don't have a downbeat in here, so this is a kick drum on the N, and that'll be measure eight, beat two, 480 ticks. We'll tab to the next snare drum, command I. This will be measure eight, beat three, 480 ticks. We will tab to that next snare drum. That's gonna be measure eight, beat four. Let's listen. Okay, here's the downbeat for measure nine. Command I, measure nine, beat one, zero. Tab to the next snare drum. That's gonna be measure nine, beat two. And we'll do just a few more here. Here's my downbeat for the kick drum. Measure nine, beat three, tick zero. Here's another snare drum, measure nine, beat four, and we'll do one more, which would be the downbeat of measure 10. And you can see that my tempo ruler is populated with all these different markings, and you can also see that they vary wildly. So let's take a listen to this with the click and see if they line up.
Okay, so it's pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to go grid mode. We're going to just lock this in, take another listen. Okay, the next thing that I need to do is I need to create a count off at the beginning of the song so that if someone is overdubbing, they can enter at the proper point. I'll play this from measure two, beat one. Have a listen. So I've got a count there, but that count has nothing to do with the tempo that the drummer is playing. And the reason for that is if you look at the tempo up here, the little flag is set to uh, 119 which doesn't relate to what's going on in our audio. So what we'll do is we will insert a tempo change. The problem is, what is the tempo? Well, if we look at our ruler, our drummer is varying all over the place, 93.1, 98.7, 95, etc. So we'll ballpark it, and we're going to call it 95 beats per minute, and we are going to snap that to bar location measure one, beat one, and we're going to click OK. You'll notice that my audio moved. That's because I changed the tempo up here. So I need to readjust my audio and drop it so that that first kick drum is at measure three, beat one, tick zero. I hit return so that I can start at measure one. Let's take a listen. So now I have a grid that I can use to overdub to. I can quantize to this. And that's it. See ya.